Awakening the key to meditation. Awakening is the beginning in the journey of transformation. Awakening is the key in meditation. One need not talk about meditation. It is only to be experienced. Awakening is the phenomenon that radiates like the sun. An awakened person is recognized by particular signs. He has united all the discordant elements within. This radiates through his being and presence. This is what is meant by a saint or a master, one who unites. The first characteristic of such a person is liberty. He does not allow himself to be tossed about by the vicissitudes of life, fear, joy, anxiety, success and failure. Also he revels in the spiritual force of consciousness. These are revealed through his calmness and affable smile and deep serenity. The smile, the look, the gestures, the words and the actions of an awakened person constitute the language of awakening. Indeed, his gestures are his language. This is the language that is used by the masters to guide the aspirants. The sole aim of the masters is to destroy the old habitual energy patterns of those who have knowledge to think conceptually. To explain this fully, I have taken two conversations of the Zen masters Cho Chao and Nan Chung because no other tradition explains the conceptual thinking better than Zen. The first conversation is between Chao Chao and Nan Chung. Chao Chao inquired what is the we. Nan Chuen replies it is our everyday mind. Chao, is it necessary to realize it? The master said to intend to realize the we is opposed to the we. Chao, but without intending how can you know whether it is the we? Nan, the way does not depend on what you know or what you not. If you know it, your knowledge is just speculative. If you do not, your ignorance is inanimate. When you do not have doubts, the unlimited universe will unfold before you and no discrimination is possible then. The second conversation, a monk asked the Zen master Chao Chao, what was Bodhidharma's intention in coming to China? What was Bodhidharma's intention to come to China? Chow Chow to look at the cypress in the courtyard. The first conversation shows the obstacle of conceptualizing. This engages the questionnaire in the way of non-discriminative realization. However, the second conversation shakes the habit of conceptualizing and thus creates shocks that is needed for bringing awakening. When the mind of the aspirant is ripe and ready, enlightenment can happen the right way. The master understands the aspirant and thus helps them to enter the realm of awakening. Truth can only be lived not experimented with. One of the great Mahatmas of the 20th century wrote a book entitled My Experiments with Truth. One needs to live with truth. What can you experiment? Experimenting means there is no experience of truth. Once truth is the experience, then there remains no doubt and you begin to live with truth. Meditators never attempt to describe reality. The masters only guide the aspirant in the direction of truth. The master says, do not look at my finger, look at what the finger is pointing towards. This is the famous Buddha teaching, finger pointing to the moon. Awakening is the beginning in the journey of transformation. It is the opening of the inner being. It leads to a sort of witness attitude. 
wherein the inner consciousness looks at all that is happening both within and without but there is no direct interest this further brings equanimity wherein there is no pain or pleasure only serenity remains one develops the attitude of being separate from the happening only observing without being part of it also it brings non attachment to things beings and events consciousness is the faculty that brings awareness of anything through identification there is divine consciousness that is not only aware but knows the effects to be aware of something does not mean that you know everything about it consciousness is the force of awareness of self and things it consists of dynamic and creative energy within it is capable of determining its own reactions and also abstains from such reactions it can not only answer to forces but create or separate itself from the force too usually consciousness is identified with the mind in this form it is only the human range there are levels of consciousness both above and below this level with these we do not have any contact at least in the beginning by consciousness is meant something that remains the same throughout however it varies according to conditions and the operation in such a case we say the consciousness is either suppressed or disorganized or in a differently organized state this does not mean that consciousness is opposed to any specific part of the being it is fundamental to the being and it formulates any part it chooses to manifest in this process it develops them from above flowing downwards from the spiritual levels progressively in this process it helps the process of involution in matter or formulating them in an upward process of evolution consciousness is composed of two elements awareness of self things forces and conscious power to be aware is the first thing you have to be aware of things and being in the right consciousness and seeing their true nature however awareness by itself is not enough awareness needs a will and the energy field make the consciousness effective you may have the full consciousness of what has to be done but you may be helpless to effect the change someone else may have the will power but not the right awareness to bring about the necessary change when you are in true consciousness the will and awareness both are in harmony with the cosmic one this harmony will bring about necessary changes the two things that are important are will and awareness consciousness by its nature is not detached from the mental and other activities however it can detach itself and at the same time remain involved as human consciousness it is always involved as one grows and develops consciousness leads to detachment consciousness is that which brings awareness of things and energy is the force put in the action to do these things consciousness is that which brings awareness of things and energy is the force put in action to do things consciousness may have energy it can keep it or put it out but it does not mean when the energy is put out but it does not mean that when the energy is put out the consciousness is also put out consciousness is always there to observe this energy in action consciousness and mind human beings have not delved deeper into themselves 
find both mind and consciousness as synonymous. Only when one becomes more aware of oneself, then one can see different degrees, types, powers of consciousness at the mental, physical, psychic and spiritual levels. Mind is modified consciousness that brings forward mental energy. Man can stand back in his mental consciousness and also watch his mental energy performing acts like thinking, planning, etc. With the process of introspection, one can find that consciousness observes and energy acts. With a little practice, anyone can do that. And when he begins to observe his own thoughts, feelings and actions, it means the process has begun. Whenever anybody wants to develop consciousness for true action, it can come in several ways. You may get the habit or faculty of watching your movements in such a way that you can see the impulse to action coming and also observe its nature at the same time. A consciousness may come which feels uneasy whenever a wrong thought, impulse to action or feeling is there. And finally, something within you may warn and stop you from doing that which is wrong. The human body has its own consciousness from where it acts. Our surface mind knows very little about this body consciousness. The mind feels it only in an imperfect manner and it only sees the results not the cause. When one continues the journey, one can become aware of this body consciousness, its movements and also the force that acts upon it both internally and externally.